Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my channel. This is the one and only Silo Man coming to you from an underground launch control facility in a former Atlas F intercontinental ballistic missile base outside of Roswell, New Mexico, USA. For the next roughly 18 minutes, I hope to be taking you through what we've done over the last seven days trying to finish up on the electrical subfed panel on the lower level of the control center and also the upper level of the control center where we're finishing up with that 200 amp panel and I'll be taking you through some of the interesting things that we've done. Again I'd like to begin with the caveat to please ladies and gentlemen if you're not used to dealing with electricity please by all means hire yourself a licensed electrician from your state. Um, it's very, very important. If you make a mistake, it can truly be costly. So at that point, what you're seeing right here in these photographs is we're working on the lower level of the control center. We're, we're trying to energize what we've already done on the wall. And it's, an, again, a non-bearing petition. And you'll see where we're, we're bringing those, those lines into the panel itself. And as we're doing that, you know, it's the way I've got this broken out is we've got two quad boxes per one circuit. So we can, we can put a lot of electricity in this, in this wall. And you can see there where we're bringing it in at this point. And then, of course, we're bringing in every circuit and we're tying to the breaker, also to the ground and also to the neutral. And then once we're finished, we'll be running a, a sub feed from the upper level control uh, panel all the way down to here. And what Carrie's doing at this point is we're just finishing up ticking and tying uh, that one particular side on the left. Well, we're not really energizing, but at this point, we are attaching the wires to the breaker itself. This one has been a lot of fun. A little time consuming. I mean, literally over the last six days, we've been ticking tying and everything. How we're going to be bringing in the primary, uh, the power feed uh, to this particular panel. And, and you'll, you're gonna be seeing that over All right, now we're going to start on the right side. I've gone ahead and isolated the grounds. I mean, again, I, as I've told you before, I mean, you just have to love the grounding grid associated with an intercontinental ballistic missile site. I mean, they are just phenomenal. And the reason being is you could... Um, static electricity around the warhead. And there we got the breakers on the right hand side too and we're about to we're about to connect the circuits together. Starting at the top you can see we've how we've gone ahead. These are all 20 amp for right now, even though this is a number 10 wire going to these outlets and they are 20 amp uh, outlets. Uh, I went ahead and ran it with number 10 wire and just to give us a little bit of extra so. And there we're nearly finished on the right side. It's always nice to organize it really well. Some of the excess wire we had from pulling it out. And there we've got that the other side done now. I had two short lines so you can see what we've had to do with this box. We had to make a connection. And we'll put a cover plate on it. You can also uh, a wire nut inside of the, the panel itself. We didn't need to do that at this point. And you can take a closer look at it.
And there again, we're about to tie in. We're going ahead and tie it in with the breakers themselves. And we're coming over. There were just two simple circuits. We were shy about a foot and a half, maybe two feet per circuit. We've gone ahead and put on some cover plates. I'm not too sure. We need to, we need to straighten out, as you can tell, uh, some of the outlets. And uh, I'm not sure. This is a dark brown as a cover plate. Uh, with kind of an ivory outlet and that the floor will be that color so I was thinking well maybe it'll look pretty good so we, I bought about 10 of them just to take a closer look and see how we like it overall and there we've we've attached those last two and we've got that all all ready to go and again we're finishing up on just putting some of those tins And you can see how we're going to bring in the, the, the power feed to this panel. We're going to do it with flex. Uh, right now I'm thinking of either coming straight down the wall and then over. We'll be sweeping it through there. We'll have quite a bit of flex so she'll, she'll have a lot of give to her. And then of course we'll finish it up around. We've got, the, we've got now the cover over the breakers and then we'll go in through. And once, once we start to energize we'll go through and of course put down which and we'll identify to the outlet exactly which circuit and which breaker. So if we ever have an issue, we just simply look at that, come over to the panel and de-energize, so to speak. Once we get that final hookup in, I'm gonna run a couple independent grounds tying into the, the missile base itself grounding grid. So there'll be a couple extra in there. That's one of the reasons we're not mudding and taping that panel just yet to the left of the electrical box. And you can see some of that again. We've got to straighten that up. Now we're on the upper level. This one was a little interesting. This was already uh, energized. So what we had to do, we had to shut her down. And um, we're using some, some uh, uh, LED battery operated lights that I picked up, which are pretty good. Yeah, it, it puts out a nice light and then we're going ahead and, and uh, we're going to be reorganizing that entire panel itself. Uh, obviously it will have the breakers for the sub feed. Uh, right now we'll also have uh, where the two lines that you see right there were for the uh, electric on demand uh, hot water unit. So it, it, you can see how we're, we're going to be going now back through and portion of wire that you see down at the bottom that's coming in from the emergency backup generator and this other side panel which we can I want to say there's 15 circuits on that side that we have that immediately come on when the backup generator fires up. Uh, that's the subfed panel breaker at the bottom of the uh, stairwell and here you can see some of those lights lighting up the area and we're going to get started bringing in uh, all of the uh, flexible conduit into the into the box itself and then getting ready to go ahead and tie that in. See it's pretty dark but again that panel wasn't energized so there was really no fear of anything and you can see us now on the left where we've got those lines coming in and we've got the wire in and we're just doing it now to the right hand side. And then what we'll be doing is coming back, putting in the breakers. And then, at last, we'll, we'll then be tying in the, the electrical lines to the specific breakers. And you can see here, we're, we're, we're just about finished with the right-hand side. We've got just a couple more to go. It looks like we've got about four. You'll notice at the top, that's where we had SO cable. Uh, that is really handy. Wow, I love that. Because it's super heavy duty. I, I mean, it's just, it's very, very tough. But what we are doing is at one point, I had six circuits of SO cable. Um, again, number uh, uh, number 10 wire with uh, its own GFI. So in case there ever was a problem, then of course it would just trip the breaker. And uh, what we're doing now is going back through and I'm taking some of those SO cables out. Um, we're changing a little bit of it 
and you can see some of that SO cable that was right there. And of course, with that quad box that's attached to that SO cable, um, it's, we're using it to run some of the appliances on the upper level. You can see what looks like a pretty good mess. Um, all of these shots were taken in the last two days, which would make it February 25th, 26th, 2020. Uh, again, our temporary kitchen, you can see we just moved some of the dishes and laid out some of the electrical equipment that we use when we're doing this. You can see the, the backup generator subfed panel there on the right. And then, of course, it's leading over where we're going to start tying these wires if we can get beyond the mess. And again, we we're just trying to get everything right and correct. What we do until we're, we're finished, you can see I put in the breakers at this point. We have the double pole, the two forties at the top. We're trying to balance out the power for each leg of the, the electricity. And then what we're doing now is we're just simply start. I like to start at the bottom and work out. And now we're just we're going ahead and attaching the, the uh, electrical lines to the well circuits to the specific breakers for that circuit and again that's part of the the loop down there is, is from what was the backup generator those were a few of the lines that we just simply didn't use now that'll be changing i'll probably come back through and re-energize quite a bit of this the other right now the only thing i was really energizing was the lights and then most of the circuits in my office which is really the, the final blast lock to the silo itself. And I'll take you through a little bit closer part of that. We also put in a couple independent grounds and we're tying those directly into the, the missile bases grid, uh, grounding grid. So it's completely separate of the neutral and we're not bonding that side of it. And one of the reasons that we're not doing that is that this is coming from a 200 amp fuse disconnect on the surface that's coming that's just below the the, uh, the meter. So, and you can see where we're starting to attach the, the lines to the breakers. We've already done the bulk of it on the right hand side. And there we're just running temporary power for right now. I have a couple of the SO cables hooked up so we could run the refrigerators and things like that. Here's a little closer look at what we're doing. We haven't yet uh, hooked in the lines for the electric, uh, permanently that is, for the electric on-demand water, water. And there you can see some of the SO lines. We're going to be taking two of those out. be adding another one on top which will probably be the sub feed to the lower level and whether or not I doubt seriously if we use that so obviously changing that over to a flexible condo and run a much bigger wire of course and there's a little We've got the two SO lines coming in. You can see that right there. They're the bottom two. And that's that's typically for the two circuits that we're running in the temporary kitchen. And that would be either the bar refrigerator, the mini refrigerator, you know, the hot plates, the, uh, the, the electric skillet, and things like that, microwave. Then a lot of this we were doing today, which was the 27th. And now what we're doing is we're going back through, we're just retightening everything and doubly check to make sure everything's good and tight. We've already done that on the primary power feeds coming in from the surface. And we're just going back through. And 
And we still haven't energized yet, obviously. We get about an hour and a half to maybe two hours on these uh, uh, LED light banks. It's an interesting, I mean, super bright, but about an hour and a half you're maxed out on it. So right now, instead of stopping, and we're just simply using some flashlights. And just retightening everything. You can see the lines coming in from the other side. One of them is a subfed panel that we have here on the upper level. The other one is the two lines going into the hot water on demand. And then uh, just finishing up. You can see we put a couple plugs in. Just as a precaution, just as a precaution. And then, of course, we got the cover plate back on her. The cover and took out for the corrected slots. Once we get everything energized, um, we, we still need to put in the outlet covers and things like that. So all those breakers are off. And we'll come back through and identify which circuits and which breakers. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much for watching. Please, if you haven't, subscribe. Click that bell for updates. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you'd like. Uh, a comment. I, I, I truly enjoy many people contact me privately, and it's something I wish we could do more with YouTube, and perhaps we can get to that point. Don't hesitate. Uh, you'll see my Patreon page. Obviously, we're always going to be doing this. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, we're going to be starting in the silo, doing some light changes. And we're also getting going to be getting started on Carrie's site. And you're going to really enjoy that one because his silo doors are open and he has nearly all of his silo crib steel with all of its levels. So you're going to enjoy that quite a bit when you get to see it. And that, of course, is in the Roswell area, Site 10. Another thing you can look up on my old website, siloworld.net. And um, you can see some of the old pictures that I used to do.